Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, Ants on a Vlog. Hope you enjoy! So recently I was at a friend's house and we discovered a colony of Tetramorium Tshushime, Japanese pavement ants that are actually an invasive species here where we live. So we decided to excavate them our first time excavating a wild colony and split the workers evenly and see what if we could keep them in captivity and how it would go. Um, so basically I got all the workers in the jar and I got the two queens in the test tube right here. My friend took the other queen. And I decided to separate the dirt from one jar into the other jar without getting workers, like, as little as possible. Um, however, that process was, like, extremely time-consuming, though I planned to put the workers in the glass jar and apply the homemade baby powder and rubbing alcohol mixture to keep the ants from climbing out of the jar, and that was my original plan, to then put them all in the former carrium I would make. But that did not go as easy as I expected, so I just ended up putting the queen's test tube in a in a bin and dumping the workers in their dirt on top of the bin, and you can see the workers move the queens out into their dirt-made chambers, and I just covered the top of the bin with the baby alcohol mixture. Um, you can see the tunnels they made right there, and you can see one of the queens is still in the test tube, but I know what you guys are thinking. Isn't this video about making an ant nest? Well, it is, and that's where we are going next. This is when I took my time to make the ant nest without having to worry about them escaping or the queens being separated from the workers and dying, because I knew that eventually she would move out of the test tube and join her colony. See right here, after a lot of hard work, I'd gotten them rid of almost all the dirt except their main two nesting chambers. And to celebrate, I gave them a little bit of salmon for their protein, which they really liked. It was left over from my last night's meal. <laughs> and they really, really liked that. But now, the second topic of this video. You know I could have just left them in the dirt natural setup, but nope, I was going to go above and beyond and do the extra step and build them a whole new form of carrium. So the first material... That I got was hydrostone, a type of dental plaster. Then I got some just random modeling clay. I got a tubware bin from my local store. I got a pitcher frame. Um, it doesn't really matter what size as long as it's small enough to fit inside your tubware. And I got some sponges. Those were my toolkit for my new master plans. Next, you basically would want to cut your acrylic. So I just took the two halves and I cut them and then I continued to sand the half down to the exact um, size that I thought would best fit this formicarium. Um, it doesn't really have to be any exact size, but then you want to take your modeling clay and you want to model out your tunnels, um, your hydration chambers. You can see I had two right there. Um, and I had a three total chambers that I had a small, medium, and large one for the ants. And then I also um, modeled out the entrance and outrance port of the former carrium. Now you are ready to pour your mixture of hydrostone. So first you will want to apply olive oil on your mold to make sure it will come off easily and as clean as possible. And then you will want to take your one cup of hydrostone, put it in your container... And then you will want to take a half cup of water, as shown here, and then mix that with your hydrostone. M make sure whatever container you use is easily, um, it's biodegradable, so you can throw it away. And basically, you will need to get rid of it, because the hydrostone ruins drains and stuff, and it's very hard to get out of pipes. So you don't want to wash this and ruin your plumbing. <laughs> Um, so I just kind of mixed it up here. Eventually we did go back and add more hydrostone because it was not the right consistency of toothpaste. But a lot of you may be wondering why hydrostone over all these other tutorials showing plaster of Paris. Well, hydrostone is mold resistant and it's also very good at retaining moisture, which provides a really good nesting environment for the ants. So now you want to pour your mixture into your mold that you can see right here how I did it. I did it gently and you can see just by the way it pours it's kind of a milkshake or toothpaste consistency which is really good in my experience as I think the nest turned out very good um, doing it this method. Now let me tell you a little bit about 
what the species is that's going into this formicarium. Now, their name is actually Tetramorium shishime. I just learned the T is silent, and they are also called Japanese pavement ants. They are very common where I live, but that is bad because they are an invasive species, which means they are killing the native species and taking food away, which is why when I came across them with my friend, we decided to excavate them and put them into captivity. I left the cast to dry overnight and came back the next day, and it was rock solid, you can see right here, and it was time to get it out. So I kind of flipped it over, and without trying to break it, I gently tapped it multiple times until it kind of just slid out. And then after I had it out, I had to clean up all the little leaks of the hydrostone spilling in under the acrylic um, with my fingernail and a pin. And then it kind of just, eventually the glass kind of popped out with the pin going around the edges and kind of refining the, like, loose bits of hydrostone. And then I proceeded to take the clay out. There wasn't really a hope for saving the mold because... <laughs> Um, the clay did not budge, and you kind of had to, once you got a good grip on it, then you could get it out, but you kind of had to make that grip, which kind of messed with the mold and destroyed it a little. But it did get a really nice look, in my opinion, of the olive oil sinking into the hydrostone and then giving it this, like, natural rock-type texture that I really liked. And with all of my... Um, all of the clay released, then I decided to paint it red and give it the finish it needed. And you can see the final product right here. I put the sponges in that I cut like little squares. They fit in really easily. And I drilled little holes into the acrylic because this nest was going to be hydrated through syringes in the sponges. And I took some AC tubing. I cut it and I put it in there. You can see, and used a little of the extra clay I had left over to seal the hole in. And, you know, all in all, it came out very nice. I really like the look of the nest, the colors and the textures. And, I mean, I would recommend that you guys would try this as well if you're a beginning ant keeper. Or just like an advanced ant keeper and have colonies that you're looking for a home that doesn't cost tons of money for them. You guys can see here, I have it connected up to the outworld with the Tetramorium ants. And right there, you can see I drilled a hole in and put some tubing and connected it. And hopefully they will be moving into there shortly. I also put the barrier around the top so they can't escape. I know you guys are probably like, whoa, did his voice change? Yes, my voice has changed. I started recording this video around, well, several months ago. And I just kind of stopped it in the process. But you can see... I still have the nest, and I actually made another one there. And this one is not in use. It needs to be clean. You can see how dirty it is right there. But I'm going to give you um, my ruling of how effective this nest is after working on it. Well, using it for months. Um, this nest does host two colonies. The Tetramorium one in it in the video um, sadly has died. Um, but not because of this colony. What actually... I mean, not because of this nest. Um, what actually happened is... Um, I moved them into the Ants Canada um, ant tower nest, and they got under the nest reducer, and they ended up getting trapped and dying. <laughs> so, what I've learned is that these two nests work really well. Um, however, don't move your ants because you can. Move your ants because you need to. Um... Just, that's what I want you guys to take away from this video. Uh, how to make a formicarium and that. Because I've found that in my experience, I'll often, like, get an ant colony, and I'll be ex so excited to move them into the formicarium. And then what will end up happening is they'll suffer. I mean, because um both colonies I've put in this have been wild colonies, one was the Tetramorium, the other, right here has they did really really bad too this is a phenogaster look how much brood they have right there guys there we go yeah but they used to have maybe five times that amount of workers and they all died because i moved them um too quickly and these the ants they 
when you catch them from the wild, this is a wild-caught colony. This is a wild-caught colony of Temnothorax acorn ants. Um, when you catch ants from the wild, the transition to going into a man-made setup is really, really hard for them, guys. So I recommend starting out with test tubes and maybe working your way up into a formicarium. But yeah, the, this formicarium, all in all, it's worked really well for me. I mean... It is a little hard to clean, because some of the spots kind of want to stay there. But it, it has been really, really good. Um, you can see right here, the other one I made um, is for my acorn ants. Well, not it, I didn't make it for them in mines, but I've tried moving them into it. And you can see right here, they really like the tight space, um, because they are so small. So it's pick your who you're making it for, and make it for them, because they much prefer the acorns over their natural habitat over the man-made one. So, that's just keep it in mind. Try to replicate their natural habitat as much as you can. Oh, hello you. This is Indiana Bones, everyone. Indy, say hi. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> um, but yeah, where was I? Yeah, these nests do work really well. But as in all nests, you have to use them appropriately. You can see I took the clay off this one. The clay has worked really well, um, and it is non-toxic. I have it on this one. I have hot glue here, and then that is open to clean it. But, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope that you guys try making one of these nests, and let me know how they work. I think they turn out, honestly, like, I think they turn out looking great, and I mean... The, the, even though I haven't had any success in them, it is because I moved the ants out of them, um, too quickly. I didn't let them get into it. But I think they work really, really well. I mean, you just gotta put a lot of thought into the nests. And if you do that, your ants will eventually, you'll see it be returned. And you'll see a colony grow in the nest you made. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed, and bye.